Welcome to Veterans Forum, a program by veterans, about veterans, and for veterans and their families. I'm your co-host, Bob West, with Ray Chattery and Jerry Devlin. Our goal is to provide important information on legislation, benefits, support, and activities for you and your family by interviewing leaders in our community. Jerry, who do we have with us tonight? Well, t tonight we have a very interesting guest. And in this day of the anti-government feeling, which seems to be epidemic across the nation, it's good to have a government program that is a model throughout the nation. And I'm specifically referring to the Maryland Cemetery uh, program, Veteran Cemetery. And when people are looking to see a well-run program around the nation, uh, they come to Maryland. And tonight we have uh, Pat Tracy, who's the Assistant Director of Cemetery and Memorial Programs with the Maryland State Department of uh, Veterans Affairs. Uh, Pat is a 35-year member of the International Society of Arbor Culture. Uh, he was educated in the Middle West at uh, both Eastern Michigan University and uh, Michigan State University uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the great Wolverine State. And he's done a, a lifetime of work in, in, in arborism and uh, has, has done a great deal to help make our program what it is. And to paraphrase uh, Chester A. Riley in the Show the life of Riley, referring to Digger Odell, the Undertaker. Pat is the last man to let you down. Pat, <laughs> the ball is in your court. Welcome, Pat. Thank you very much. Tell us about the uh, cemetery programs, the cemeteries in the state, and and how it affects uh, veterans here in the state of Maryland. Yeah, we have one of the uh, premier and probably the best uh, state-run veteran cemetery program in the country. It's uh, nationally known and. Uh, we do have uh, five state veteran cemeteries available for our uh, state veterans and their families. The, uh, the program has been in, uh, the cemeteries have been in existence for approximately uh, 30 years, uh, starting out with uh, the original cemetery was in, uh, e on the Eastern Shore over near Herlock. And uh, from then on, they, they continued adding cemeteries until we have five cemeteries now with uh, are approximately 160,000 burial spots. In the uh, last 25 years, we've interred uh, 70,000 Maryland residents and their uh, veterans and their residents in the state. And where are the ones closest uh, here to Prince George's County? Well, we actually have uh, one in Prince George's County. That's Cheltenham Veterans Cemetery on uh, Crane Highway and down uh, near uh, Waldorf. Uh, we have a, a second one in Anne Arundel <coughs> County, that's Crownsville Veterans Cemetery. Uh, of course, in Crownsville, Maryland, that's a little bit north of here. Uh, the Eastern Shore, the original one, is, uh, as I said, near uh, Herlock and uh, Preston on the other side of the bridge. Uh, the uh, fourth and largest cemetery that we have in the system is Garrison Forest, and that's in uh, northern uh, Baltimore near Owings Mill. And finally, we have Rocky Gap Cemetery out near uh, Rocky Gap State Park. Uh, that's our, our smallest cemetery, uh, possibly our most attractive cemetery in the uh, western part of the state. And uh, each cemetery has a superintendent that uh, takes care of that cemetery and uh, runs it to the best of his ability. And uh, <clears throat> you, uh, all total, we have 160 uh, spaces and about 70,000 are already filled. Now, does that include uh, the sp uh, spouses as well as the veteran themselves? Yes, it does, yes. Okay, uh, is it double tiered or do they get separate spaces? No, uh, they are, uh, each veteran uh, that is qualified to be buried in the state, uh, in our system, uh, they are assigned a grave site at the time of their uh, passing and uh, that site is also available for the uh, spouse or the dependents in the family. So it's, it's one grave site per veteran. Oh, I see, okay. And uh, how does a veteran become qualified? Okay, uh, that's pretty easy. Uh, what you have to do is be a uh, honorably discharged Maryland resident, and uh, you have to uh, be uh, a Maryland resident for two years. Uh, there's several different residency requirements that uh, you can meet if your uh, your military records do not say you are, have a home of record in Maryland on your uh, discharge notice. So uh, 
basically you have to be a Maryland resident, honorably discharged, and uh, that uh, pretty much and makes you qualified. And lived here for two years. Uh, and, and right, uh, two years residency. Okay, because we do have a lot of people that kind of move into the state. So. Yes, well, while you're in the state, uh, we have a uh, pre-application uh, system where you can pre-apply to be uh, considered for uh, burial in one of the cemeteries. And uh, in that, you provide your military discharge information and uh, some your uh, record, re your home of record, uh, where you're living. And uh, we will immediately uh, tell you whether you're qualified to be buried or not. And uh, that's good for uh, as long as you maintain your residency in Maryland. Uh, if you happen, as long as your home of record on your discharge is in Maryland, you're, you're good to go. Uh, if you happen to move out and your home is not uh, a uh, home is not a home of record is not in Maryland, uh, you would need to be able to uh, provide two years residency, uh, proof of residency. Uh, a third way, of course, is uh, if you die in the state of Maryland, uh, your death certificate is proof of residency. As odd as it sounds, but uh, that's qualification. Well, now, uh, besides <coughs> normal burial, uh, what about uh, a lot of people now are considering cremation? Does the cemetery accept uh, uh, oh, we, the ashes? We do indeed, and it's becoming uh, much more popular. Uh, three of our cemeteries have just uh, opened up within the last year, columbariums, and uh, they're becoming uh, much more popular. Uh, We've had uh, quite a bit of expansion and uh, renovation in uh, the Crownsville Veterans Cemetery, the Cheltenham Veterans Cemetery, and uh, they're just finishing up in Garrison Forest. Uh, each one has a columbarium now, as well as uh, in-ground uh, cremation plots. Oh, I see. And uh, what is the cost for the application and so forth? Okay, the application uh, cost is, uh, there's no application fee. Uh, the uh, the veteran must be the uh, person that applies, and uh, what he, uh, when he's approved, what he gets for that is uh, when he uh, passes, he's assigned a, a plot at one of our cemeteries with, of his choice, and uh, the uh, state of Maryland, uh, through the federal government, provides a uh, grave liner if it's an in-ground in grave, in-ground burial. Uh, the federal government also provides a headstone and uh, of course, perpetual maintenance. The uh, spouse is also allowed to be uh, interred in the same grave as the veteran. And uh, there is, however, a charge for a non-veteran spouse. And uh, the uh, charges are uh, reviewed and set periodically by the state legislature. Currently, the opening and closing costs for a, uh, a uh, veteran spouse interment is $600, and the uh, liner for casketed burial is $149, and if a uh, spouse should happen to be, uh, decide that they want to, or the next of kin decide that they're going to be cremated, uh, the cost of a cremation burial in the state is $400. Hmm. And I might point out that it's a very good idea to pre-register. Um, for example, uh, in my own case, I was entered the service and was discharged in another state in Massachusetts, and presumably you'll die in Maryland. But if assuming that, uh, that that you hadn't done it ahead of time, and you're one of those people who's out of state, going on vacation in Delaware or West Virginia or Virginia, Pennsylvania, where many local people do go, uh, you've got yourself a lot of silly bureaucracy that you can solve by simply getting it ahead of time, contacting the Department of Veterans Affairs with your DD-214 and make sure. The uh, Cheltenham, I think, is the closest to here. I'm not sure. Crownsville is about by the same distance. Cheltenham, where uh, it, it'll be the f second dwelling I've chosen in my life. The first one was a Levitt House on Kitmore Lane. 